Yes, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Rugby Muscle Podcast. I'm your host, as always, TJ. And I know, I know, my hair is getting ridiculous. But whatever, we're going to deal with it. We're going to move forward. If you are watching the YouTube video, you know my hair is ridiculous. Give it a thumbs up, as usual. Let us know in the comments below what you think of this series, which is the fat loss series in the Rugby Muscle Applied uh, big series, I guess. Um, and in this video, we're going to be discussing nutrition for fat loss. We've spoken already in Fat Loss 102 about training for fat loss, uh, which on the YouTubes has just been released, which is a little bit late. Um, it's been on the podcast for a while. And Fat Loss 101. Now, I would definitely give Fat Loss 101 a listen or a watch if you haven't done. You could potentially skip over 102 if you're already here, and I'll show you exactly why after this. But as usual, thumbs up, comments below, please Please do that right away because it does help out the channel. But without further ado, let's get into this one. So today we're going to be discussing, like I said, nutrition for rugby fat loss. And we're going to deal with a conundrum that we want to get leaner, but we also want to be able to perform at our best. Um, and that is really the struggle that we're going to be discussing. Um, once we've dealt with that struggle, we've got an idea of like what the lay of the land is with that. We're going to be setting out a plan. We're going to um, discuss why we lay out the plan the way it does and really giving you a, sort of almost the blueprint. I'm almost giving you the keys to everything here. Um, and it isn't as simple as sometimes I lay out, but I do lay it out very simply. And it is, um, I say it, is, it isn't as simple as laid out. It is as simple as laid out. It's not as easy as I laid it out or as it looks like when it's laid out. Um, we're going to talk about your weekly habits. We're going to be talking about hunger management um, and mindset for fat loss. So we will expand upon the plan because, like I said, it's, it looks really simple and it is really simple. But it's not that easy. And we want to do these other things to sort of make it a little bit easier in the process. So first and foremost, this is the problem with the conundrum of fat loss for rugby, right? Is that a lot of people, they go to the gym just for fat loss. That's the reason they go to the gym is because they want to lose fat. And when we look at the rugby physical preparation pyramid here, um, we will see that fat loss doesn't appear on this uh, on this pyramid. There is nowhere, there is no training. Uh, yeah, it, fat loss in terms of your training is never the uh, the actual adjustment that the body makes because of the training. It is a uh, side effect of the training, right? The 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 actual goal, and even you could say hypertrophy is something this is like that as well, but it is not the reaction that the body makes um, to adjust to become better. It's You're not sending a fat loss signal to the body. You are burning energy. That is all you're doing. Whereas these physical components are things that you can train for and things that will make you a better rugby player. So um, really, I've got to start by saying that, that, that these are the things that you need to consider when looking at your training. Now, with that in mind, the nutrition for fat loss, you know, is all about calorie balance. Now, it doesn't matter what the fuck you do with your hormones. It doesn't matter what the fuck you do with, you know, whether you eat a vegan diet, whether you eat a carnivore diet, whether you eat whatever. It's always going to come down to calorie balance. Always. Um, is, that is not up for debate. That is That has been proven time and time and time again. You can do things to burn more calories on a daily basis, you know, like, you know, the better your hormones are aligned, the better you sleep, etc. Um, those things can help you burn more calories or, or be more active, essentially, is what you're doing, right? So for here's a perfect example is when people say that you burn more calories throughout the day when you get a good night's sleep, that is not because there, you know, the calorie balance all of a sudden doesn't apply. It is because you are slightly more active. You you are not like when you are tired, when you have bad night's sleep, you lie down all the time. You're a lot lazier to do things. You 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 uh, subconsciously conserve your energy, and that is why, like you end up burning less calories. Whereas if you have a good night's sleep, you don't do that. You function perfectly well. You're not trying to preserve anything. You're moving well, and you go about burning more fat. Hopefully that makes sense already. So. Really, like there is no there is no diet that that doesn't uh, that will promote fat loss without this calorie balance coming into effect. So, you know, it is like a bank it is like a bank balance. If you if you are um, or a savings account, right? If you are getting paid less than what you are spending, aka if you're consuming less than you are, um, or if you're yeah consuming in calorie wise less than you are burning, 
then you're going to have to start to dip into that savings account or those fat stores. Bad thing financially, good thing physically for your for your uh, if that's what your goal is to to lose fat. Okay. Um, the problem is with this is that you know over time calorie balance is also going to impact your recovery. So if you're someone that eats 4,000 calories, um, you you overall have an absolute greater ability to be able to recover from those calories than someone that consumes 1,000, okay? That's an um, extreme example, but it lays out the point uh, very well. So you have to understand that there is, a, there is not just a point of like eating as little calories as possible because then you're not going to be able to recover from your training and you're not going to be able to fuel your recovery process. And, and and even if you do, you know, recover from that training in that you don't just feel like shit all the time, you're, you're not going to, uh, number one, train v- very well the next day because you, you need more energy to be able to not just recover, but train well again and again and again and again. But you also need that energy to fuel that recovery process to come back and come back stronger. If you're under fueled, that means that you can recover, maybe come back at baseline or more is more than likely you feel your recovery to come back and be able to compete but you're worse you're 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 not only are you not stronger but you're actually weaker because you know you've you've put your body through this stress and you've bench pressed or you've squatted or you've done whatever and you haven't given your body the energy that it needs to recover and so then it's going to say well i'm not going to recover and come back stronger doesn't make any sense i'm going to use these calories just to get maybe back to baseline and I'm going to save myself because we it's, it appears like we are we are um, you know we, we're in a situation where we cannot eat as much, and that's what you're telling your body. So really, this is why training for fat loss doesn't make any sense to me because it impacts calorie balance slightly. You you burn a few hundred calories most of the time when you're training. At most, you know it's it's not a it's not as big a difference as what eating less can make. Uh, it also takes time away from all these other areas that we have on this physical preparation pyramid hypertrophy aerobic capacity movement control speed power output core control absolute strength speed strength footwork mobility anaerobic endurance your skills rugby training all your training that you can do to become a better rugby player are uh, that much harder to recover from because you're wasting time doing extra sessions just for the goal of losing fat doesn't make sense and is not what you should be doing you should be doing your training to improve at these areas and then your fat loss is then dictated by your um, by your energy balance, and you've got to be careful with that energy balance because, as I said, it impacts your recovery. And if you look at this cup here on the bottom right, your maximum recovery recoverable volume, your minute maximum adaptive volume. So, how much you can train and then recover from? You know, once you overfill that container, you're overtrained and you stop recovering and coming back better. Well, if you're you know the the more calories that you have. And along with sleep and everything else that goes into recovering properly, the bigger your cup gets, right? And that is a point. There's a certain threshold where that doesn't no longer apply, right? So if you're already consuming 6,000 calories, probably consuming 8,000 calories doesn't make you recover any better. But, you know, it does make your, you know, there is a point where make it, consuming more calories is going to make your cup and ability to recover bigger. But it's also going to make your ability to lose fat more difficult because you're consuming more calories right that means you have to get more work done exponentially to be able to um to be to be able to lose fat right so yes you consume an extra 1000 calories allows you to train extra one extra training session that means you've got to train and consume and burn an extra 1000 calories in order to even maintain calorie balance so i probably skip the head with that slide a little bit too fast because i need to hammer home this point right so if you consume extra calories to be able to recover more, that means that you have to then train even harder and maybe that then that train or train even harder or train even longer. And maybe then that training pushes you then back out of that um, recovery zone. And again, you have to find that balance. And it's not just a case of training more or eating less. It's, it's, it's a really neat little balance that you've got to try and find. But overall, it's made by adjusting where you are currently at, not by... Um, overhauling and doing a complete new system because that will probably leave you either under recovered or over recovered and if you're over recovered you're probably not losing fat almost certainly okay so here we'll lay out a plan that is almost absolutely foolproof it doesn't mean it's easy um, it 
requires some work on your part, but it is something that you, if you can implement, you will be able to burn fat and improve significantly as a rugby player. So before you even start this plan, imperative. You get data. You need data to base your decisions off of. You need data to know that you're on the right track. You need data to know that you're heading towards your end goal and where you're at. If you don't do that, then you're just shooting blindly. And, and yes, you can make progress shooting blindly. You can kill a lot of whatever you're trying to shoot at shooting blindly, but it'd be a lot better if you opened your eyes and targeted where you needed to do and you didn't waste ammo. You didn't waste a- a- ammo probably in this scenario being effort. You don't want to waste effort because that is what most people do. They, they think that they're never going to be able to lose fat because they've wasted so much effort before, but that's because they've wasted it doing stupid shit. This plan here is not stupid shit. It's the complete opposite. This is where you're going to be able to make progress. So before you start, know where you're at. Know where you're at in terms of your energy balance, your current intake, your current recovery, and your habits. So energy balance meaning that your your um, your your weight essentially, right? So if you're in positive energy balance, probably unnecessary scientific word in there, you're gaining weight, right? If you're consistently gaining weight, so you would take your weight over a period of two weeks or so, if it's slowly trending up, maybe you're gaining weight. If it's slowly trending down, sounds like you're in um, negative energy balance, okay, you're losing weight. If it's staying around the same, it goes up and down, 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 probably staying the same. You're probably in, um, you know, complete uh, equal energy balance, meaning you're the amount of calories that you're consuming is equal to the amount that you are burning. So you can adjust either way. Then current intake. So how many calories you are consuming? So this is the other end to the coin of the energy balance. So you've got your, you know where you're at in terms of your balance because you know where you're at in terms of your weight. Okay. You then know what well, I'm consuming 2,500 calories and I'm maintaining this weight. So there, boom. You've got your current, and you know that by tracking your diet for a number of weeks. Um, if you try, to, you know, if you, that's the best way to do it. You can download macronutrition calculators to, to have an idea of what your intake should be, but that isn't, you know, and you can definitely download one at rugby-muscle.com forward slash macros, but that's, you know, a better idea would be to just work out what your current macros are. And they might be terrible because you might not be eating anywhere near enough protein, but that's an adjustment that you can make like later. Or you can, it's an adjustment you can make as you're doing this process, right? So figure out what your current intake is um, and then adjust from there. But don't don't just go into a plan blindly assuming your calories or whatever. Figure out what your current intake is because this is really going to help your recovery balance. Okay, so now you've got your weight. You know where your weight is going. You've got your current calories. You know where your current calories are giving, putting your weight. So you have an idea. Of, you've already got a good map of what you're dealing with here. You then look at your recovery and your training sessions. You don't necessarily have to look at, oh, I'm burning 4,000 calories in these three training sets. No, you just have to record the number of training sessions. So you could do one medium, two hard, one light, or two light, two easy. I mean, two light, two easy. They're both the same. It would just be four easy, but two light, two heavy sessions, or whatever it is, right? How many sessions a week you have, boom, you've got that in there now. Now you've got a, you've got your training, you've got your nutrition, you've got your recovery in terms, and you've got your energy balance. Then you can look at your habits where you can easily improve. So if you're that person that I discussed earlier who just doesn't consume enough protein, right there you know that that could probably be your goal going forward. But then from there, you've got the lay of the land. You've got an idea of what your current energy balance is like. Um, and uh, really from there, you should have an idea of what you need to do to adjust, right? So if you're maintaining on 2,500 calories and you're feeling like you recovered quite well, but you're you know, you're getting quite stronger, but you don't have any more time to train anymore, well, then what you do, as I move this camera around, is you simply adjust your calories. So you consume slightly less calories, and you know that's going to put you on a path to losing fat. How far should you be losing fat? Well, that will be set by your own target. So I like to aim for around 1% per week, or 1% of your body weight per week. So a 100 kilo athlete would lose one kilo a week or so. Um, uh, fatter athletes um, can potentially lose a little bit more than that. But that percentage, you know, signifies that that would be more total weight anyway, right? So a 120 kilo athlete would lose 1.2 kilograms a week, whereas a 70 kilogram athlete would lose 0.7 kilograms so almost half right so it is almost covered by that percentage point but you can get away with it um you would then 
sort of track your training numbers trend because you don't want to be if you lose too fast there is absolutely p uh, potential for you to drop in your performance and you don't want that because you're a performance athlete you want to make sure that your training is making you a better player otherwise you're losing fat loss to become a better rugby player for what purpose doesn't make sense to me right so you, you want to make sure that your training numbers are going in the direction that you want so whether that is adding a rep a week or adding 2.5 kilos to the bar every two weeks whatever rep progression scheme or progression scheme you have you want to make sure that you're staying somewhat on board with that you don't want to make sure you want to be losing fat so fast or weight so fast that you're losing muscle and you don't want to be losing weight so fast that you're under recovered and you aren't able to do your conditioning sessions or whatever it is you want to make sure that you're not getting worse at the expense of losing this fat or losing fat at the expense of getting worse should i say um, you want to make sure that you have some targets for your performance trends so in your games like, same thing it's so important you don't want to be um you know, no one's going to give a shit on your team if you're if if you suck on you know, match day because you're eating you're you're on a diet where you're only allowed you're not allowed to eat any carbs or you're only allowed to eat 1500 calories. Like people, <laughs> they're going to hate you. Going to be like, fuck your diet, you idiot. Eat more food. So you've got to make sure you you have an idea of your performance trend and then an idea of your cannabis trend as well. So that would be. You can use, I mean, I know more and more gyms are having like those electric scales and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you can use those, but the calipers are quite good because you can just have, you can buy a caliper for like 10 bucks now and you don't even have to get five different sites or nine different sites or whatever. You just take a pinch, a consistent place in your body and just know where the millimeters are. And that's a really almost foolproof way to get an idea that you are losing fat in the direction that you want to be or losing fat the way that you want to be losing it so if you're losing body weight but the calipers aren't going down might be a time to make some adjustments so speaking of which that's where you adjust is you adjust based upon the data right so for that caliper example that's data that's not you looking in the mirror and going oh i'm not sure if i'm getting weaker or if i'm you know losing muscle or fat i'm not looking at no that's that's a caliper adjustment your body weight's gone down maybe it's water maybe you're dehydrated but that would be more data um and you know and ideally it's just done on that um percentage per week that you should be losing if you're losing um you know around one percent then that's a success you probably don't need to make adjustments and the less adjustments that you actually make on a week-to-week -week basis, the better, okay? And that's also really what the data will give you. If you're making adjustments every single week, that's going to be more emotionally based than a uh, database. You need to make sure that you make it on the data. And um, you would then, if you're not losing as fast as you're supposed to be losing and your performance is okay, again, because of the, the data is showing you this, then you have scope to you know drop an extra 100 calories or so every week and that's how i make it easy by just adjusting by 100 calories up or 100 calories down if you're losing weight too fast and your training numbers aren't going in the right direction then again you know you're not increasing you know you, you've lost three percent of your body weight that week but then you, you you know your training numbers have tanked that's cause for adding in extra calories right but overall you would just make those adjustments fairly fairly um self-explanatory but as I said, sometimes this isn't as easy as it is looks like when it's laid out. So overall, I would just, as long as you take those calories out from your protein, because, you know, taking that protein isn't really going to make you lose fat. I, you know, your, your adjustments need to come from your carbs and your fats. However you gauge those is up to you or up to a coach if you consider hiring a coach. Because again, it is difficult to make these um, adjustments not emotionally it's very easy to get emotional particularly when you're low on calories and you're recovering not quite too well and you're dealing with an issue such as potential body dysmorphia and all this stuff like it is there is a absolute scope to hire a coach <clears throat> i might know a guy anyway so you stay patient and consistent and really that is it that is the keys that is exactly all you need to be doing foolproof plan to um to lose uh to 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 lose fat on this journey and become a better rugby player because of it you didn't get an email there i did and then some extra bonus points here to really make sure because i said it's you know that's it's simple it's not easy um and particularly these ideas are going to make it easier for you so cook prepare and plan each week be proactive rather than reactive again it takes the emotion out of it it takes the discipline out of it and it means that rather than be disciplined every single night and cook a perfect meal 
you could be, potentially just be disciplined uh, one day a week and cook everything and then you don't have to worry about motivation you just worry about eating um and you know cooking really is time and effort intensive so the more you can batch it or outsource it you know there are so many of these meal prep companies going out there now that if you're willing to invest a little bit extra like boom you've got meals delivered maybe it's just breakfast and lunch or maybe it's breakfast lunch and a snack or breakfast lunch and a dinner all prepared for you as much as you can this doesn't mean that you're not allowed to eat out i mean you can absolutely eat out but again be even with that you can be proactive about it know which days you're going to eat out know which days you're going to stay on plan have an idea of what your food is going to be for the week and then that you know that is using this current discipline that you have to to really get some good habits in place and the more that you can do this the more it becomes a habit the less discipline the less motivation it requires and the more that you can do a weekly review each time and see where you've gone wrong see where you've gone right look for potential triggers as to why you might have slipped up there's all extra data to help you stay bulletproof going forward and, and make adjustments make corrections maybe if, if once it gets to thursday and your food gets a little bit boring uh you you even when you've got food cooked you tend excuse me you tend to eat out or, or order in takeout well now you know you, you know now you can use that data and say okay i do that so what can i do to combat that oh i know what i can do i can cook three different meals so that i've got variety throughout the week no matter what or whatever you know some different scenarios can happen there other hunger strategies most people don't eat enough vegetables so simply picking three to seven vegetables that you enjoy and excuse me picking three to seven vegetables that you enjoy and you eat boom you're onto a uh and again you're you you're onto a winner there um really really simple strategy to be able to um excuse me hold on really simple strategy to to essentially keep hunger at bay and keep you eating more food but less calories that's that's what eating more to lose more usually happens is people just eat a lot more vegetables so three to seven vegetables you can pad out each meal you can double it the size for very little calorie um intake by just adding a shit ton of vegetables to every single meal really easy way to do it um and then eating around your training um you firstly you don't want to be hungry when you're training you don't want to feel like you're low on energy even if you're not it you know it's a mental thing sometimes that you want to make sure that and i've found this that if i'm training and i'm on a diet i want to eat around an hour before i train because i like to train with some, some food in my belly just because it just makes me it sometimes if i get really hungry that hunger can distract me from the training whereas you want to send a signal to the body that it's time to perform you know you don't necessarily have to load yourself up with carbohydrates and and what you do what you normally do for a game but you do want to eat around your training to make sure that you're um, that you're performing and you're recovering the best you can and then finally for the mindset you want to make sure that you've got an end goal you cannot just be losing fat forever you want to make sure that you, you say right i'm going to lose fat for the next 12 weeks or 16 weeks or even just six weeks you know really going to give this a go then i'm going to stop reassess and then go again if you have a lot of fat to lose or you say i'm going to lose all this fat and then i'm going to move on to a different goal finally and, and not worry about fat loss i'm going to do it properly for 16 weeks or whatever it is give yourself a light at the end of that tunnel um it should not be a goal weight you know i'm not going to suggest that you say all right once i get to 80 kilos then i'm going to be good because maybe you get to 82 kilos you realize oh i'm really lean or maybe you get to 80 kilos and oh, i could lose more whatever um weight loss goals aren't a good idea the reason that we've got those weight loss targets from before is that's what you should expect for you to be able to recover and train as well it doesn't necessarily always uh, pan out like that you but if you've got an idea then that's you know you've got an idea for your time frame but that's not necessarily the target that is just what you're going to expect and using that to adjust if you don't hit that target that doesn't mean you failed that just means that you haven't hit that target so don't worry too much about the targets worry too more about that end goal being a time frame i'm just going to stick to this process for 12 16 24 whatever you know I'm just, this is my time frame i'm going to stick to it and then from there you're not going to buy into any hype you're not going to change plan you're not going to buy in, like there is no secret fucking source there is no blue pill or magic diet uh weight loss pill that's finally going to get you into shape it doesn't exist so stop fucking wasting your energy looking for it okay there's no supplement that's going to make this a easy process there's no supplement that you can take to 
kick you out of it, like make energy balance not apply. No, everything is down to this energy balance. So the more you can stop like investing energy and thoughts into this, any sort of fat loss hype, the better. Okay. You've got your time frame, you've got your goal, you've got your plan, or you've got your time frame as, as your goal. And if you've got your plan, you've got an idea of what you're going to do. And that's all you're going to do is focus on executing for that time frame. And finally, for in terms of like mindset, understand that this is absolutely possible. Everyone, everyone can get into shape. Maybe you don't have the genetics to be completely shredded and perform at your best year round. Hey, yeah, that might be true. But everyone can get into shape. Everyone can lose fat and sustain it. It's all about being consistent, all about having a plan where, you know, you don't eat emotionally. And over time, if you, especially if you, you, you know, you're someone that struggled with weight a lot, it's rewiring habits and then being consistent as you can cool with that i will finish this video sorry for the email fake and the alarm going off and all that stuff but hopefully you really got some good ideas and and uh you know essentially you have you have a plan there to be able to lose fat for as long as you need to um if you stick to it and don't get emotional about it otherwise Again, if you've made it to the end and you haven't already given it a thumbs up, what the hell are you waiting for? Give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions on this, because this, is this isn't the last in the Fat Loss series, but it's the last for a while, um, I will be expanding upon this, and I'll do that based upon the questions that you guys ask in the comments below. So if you have any, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this Fat Loss series. Let me know what else you think I could be doing for the Rugby Muscle Applied series. That would be awesome to know in the comment section below. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you in the next one.